and welcome to La Morada Foursquare Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. A place where we worship the Lord freely, where we could jump freely and lift up our hands. Praise God. Again, thank you for joining us. Let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, again, thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. And Father, you are welcome into this place. Father, you are welcome to touch our hearts, Lord Jesus. Father God, we worship you. Let our praises reach the heavens. Let them reach your nostrils. Let it be a sweet aroma, dear Heavenly Father, to you. God, thank you again for this time together, Lord, where we can learn of your word and we can praise you, Lord Jesus. How great thou art. How great thou art, Lord. Father, is there anyone that's sick among us, Lord? I would ask that you would touch him, Lord, even right now, Lord God, even the ones at home, that you would touch him, dear Lord Jesus, so they can enjoy the service this morning, Father God. For, Father, we exalt thee, Lord Jesus, and we will bring this request to you. Anyone that's coming, give them safe journey, Lord Jesus. Lord, be with our worship team. I know them, Lord, like you did Friday, Lord Jesus. Be with them, Lord God. Use them, Lord, in a mighty way. Father God, anoint our pastor as he brings forth the message to Heavenly Father. Let him hold back nothing, dear Lord Jesus. Let him get excited, Lord Jesus, so we can get excited with him. Again, thank you for this day you've made. We give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. We all said, Amen. 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 the fear away there is a peace that settles around us it is your love that sets our hearts ablaze and father we're on our knees with every heartbeat we bring you this offering Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. Lord, come and fill this place. strong enough to say we feel it rising up from the ashes there is a love that overcame the grave there is a love that overcame the grave and father we're on our knees with every heartbeat we bring you this offering lord come and fill this place father we're crying out spirit we need you now glorious love surrounds us lord come and fill this place father we're on our knees with every heartbeat we Bring you this offering, Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying now, so we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us, Lord, come and fill this place. I will worship you. I will worship you. 
worship you always and I will worship you I will worship you I will worship you always and I will worship you I will worship you, I will worship you, I will worship you always, and I will worship you, I will worship you, I will worship you always. And Father, we're on our knees. With every heartbeat we bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying now. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. And I will worship you. I will worship you, I will worship you always, and I will worship you, I will worship you, I will worship you always, and I will worship you, I will worship you. I will worship you always, and I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you always. And Father, we're on our knees with every heartbeat. We bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying now. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're on our knees. With every heartbeat, we bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. And I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you always. And I will worship you. I will worship you, I will worship you always, and I will worship you, I will worship you, I will worship you always. One more time. And I will worship you. Heavenly Father, for coming into this place today, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for all of the blessings, for everything you have done, everything for what you are about to do. We thank you in advance, Lord God, for that. We just worship you, Lord God, and we just we just exalt you. And we worship your name. Lord of Lord, King of all kings. Exalt you, Lord God, and we thank you. Jesus, I have decided. 
every situation, God. That we would be so full of your spirit, so full of your presence, God. That the things of the world wouldn't even come out of our mouths. But that it would be what your word says. The truth, the power, the hope, the healing, the freedom, the victory that all come through your word. She is right there. Oh, where's Destiny? Oh, here she comes. All right then. Oh, 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 oh here come River. <laughs> you you going to come again? Oh, oh okay. Now she said, I'm, okay, I'm good. All right. Hi, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these blessings. We ask, Father, that you would just minister to them and that you would minister through them that they would grow in the knowledge of you and that, Father, they have been dedicated to you. And because of that, you're at work in their lives to mold them and shape them into, you know, the young ladies, the women of God that you have so called them to be. 
So we thank you, Father, that they walk in your will, walk in the path that you set before them, growing in you and glorifying you in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Huh? Uh, smile, smile. Amen. Amen and amen. Uh, am I good? Am I good? Amen. Uh, it is... It's always a privilege to be able to share the word of God with you. I am so thankful for the grace and mercy that he has so given to me that he would extend me the privilege to share his word, to speak his word, his holy word. And I would read out of 1 Peter 4.11, which reads, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if anyone serves, let him serve by the strength which God supplies so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in uh, our study on the church of Ephesus. This is, this is Ephesus part three. And we're looking at that church and again, seeing how it can connect with us and seeing what we can learn from it, what we can glean. Now, we see it, we started out in Revelation, and this is Jesus speaking to the church of Ephesus when he's addressing um, the seven churches. And this is, this is what Jesus says to them, the thing that he has against them. Now remember, when we talked about he, he's commending them on so many levels, but he says this in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now that first love, which I believe that he is talking about, again, this is just my take on it, is the love of God. And we have that in Mark chapter 12, starting with verse 30. And it reads, this is Jesus says this, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second like it is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So I'm thinking that maybe that the church of Ephesus kind of lost focus. They, they didn't lost that first love that they have, which I believe is the love of God. And that requires for us as believers to really do some reflection to see where we're at. You know, have we grown? Have we moved? How, are we just stuck or have we backtracked? So he's asking them to check yourselves and see where you came from, see where you have fallen from. Now, in order to see that, we have to look at the letter in which the apostle Paul wrote to the church at Ephesians. Now, again, the original letter, they didn't have like chapters and verses. Those were added in later so we could find certain verses easier. So we've already talked about how that church at Ephesus had been chosen and they've been redeemed and they have purpose. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go on to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. Now you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Now we're just going to stop right there for a little bit. And he's talking about, when he jumps to, he says, you have been made alive, which means at one point you were dead. And I believe that he's talking about that they were spiritually dead. There were, and we were all spiritually dead without Christ because we have no way to have fellowship with the Father unless it's through Jesus Christ. So he says that they are spiritually dead. 
Our famous passage that we always read is this, which is John 3.16. But we're going to read John 3.16 through 18. So it's very familiar. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, then we get verse 17. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. Here it is. Here's the kicker, though. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So it literally it says that outside of Christ, we are condemned. We, we, are in, we are in judgment. And the only way to get out of that judgment is through Jesus Christ. Now, this is out of... This is out of the book of Ralph. When he's talking about you know, this death that he is saying, I believe that, he, that it's not just a, a physical death because be for honestly truthful, we all die. Each and every one of us, unless Jesus comes within our lifetime, we will face death. But in Romans 6.23, it says, for the wages of sin is death. The, but the free gift of God, that is his remarkable, overwhelming gift of grace to believers, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I believe that it's not just the physical death that, that he's talking about, but there's a spiritual death. But saints, there's also this second death in which we see in Scripture, the second death which is really the death that, that has going to have the impact on our eternity. And the Apostle uh, John writes in Revelation, he talks about this second death in chapter 20, verse 6 of Revelation. He said, blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. Once again, for over such, what? who are blessed by the first resurrection, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Well, what is that second death in which he is talking about? Well, I, I think we have some clarity here in Revelation 21 and 8. This is the second death. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the adulterers, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So, well, that, we're, we're in trouble. This is all liars. All liars. But then we, we think about, well, I'm pretty good on that. Uh, I, I, I'm not a murderer, but we have to look at, well, all right then, what is the standard that Jesus sets when it, concerning the scripture? Because if we look at it on the natural, he says, all right then, I, I'm, I, have, I have not murdered anybody. Uh, but I think we have to really consider what the verse is saying. Now in Leviticus 19, verses 17 through 18, this is part of the verses that talk about loving your neighbor. Now, verse 17 says, it says, do not, what? Hate a fellow Israelite in your, what? Heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so that they will not share in, in their guilt. Do not seek revenge. Oh, goodness. What was the other one? Or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. Oof. All right then. Now, now Jesus just adds a little bit more to it. Jesus says, okay, then you have this, you, you have what is written, but I'm going to take it a step further so that you can check yourselves. And he says in Matthew chapter 21, verses, I mean, chapter. 5, Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 21 and to 22, and this is out of the Amplified. He says, you have heard that it was said to the men of old, you shall not, what? Murder. And whoever murders 
shall be guilty before the court. But I say to you that everyone who continues to be what? Angry with his brother or harbors malice against him shall be guilty before the court. And whoever speaks contemptuously and insulting to his brother, Raka, you empty-headed idiot, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, the Sanhedrin, as whoever says you fool shall be in danger of what? The fiery hell. Whew. So that is a pretty high standard right there. What it literally, it literally, and if we look at our world today, oh my goodness, we can hate our brother because they voted for Biden. Or we can hate our brother because they voted for Trump. We hate our brother. I've known friendships to break over whether people took the vaccine or not. And, and then we begin to insult him. He says, you empty-headed idiot. How could you have voted for Trump? You empty-headed fool. How could you have voted for Biden? And we hold it against him. And families and churches have been split behind it. And, and they had this contemptuous animosity toward each other. But according to Jesus, what are we guilty of when we engage in those activities? We're guilty of as if we committed murder because it's an issue of the heart. It's not just what's written on the, the, the page, but literally it's what's written on our heart. And I'm here to tell you that we can change the laws and, and put them in place and do everything that we need to do but does it change the human heart? No. There is no amount of legislation that can change the spirit, that can change the human heart. But we think that if we do that, that that will help. But no, no, it's an internal issue. And Jesus is saying, I'm not looking just at your physical action. I am looking at your heart. And if you hate somebody, if you are angry with them, you hold it against them, you're, you're guilty. You're guilty as if you've committed murder. And that's a high standard, so now I, gotta, I have to check myself. And then we got to look at even a little further. Because he says, Paul writes, they were dead in their trespasses and sins. Now trespass, that's an interesting word, it means to slip or fall. It, it, I think we're, it's also in some commentaries is where we get the word no trespass. You see that sign on, on property, there's no trespassing. Because when you trespass, you're going down the wrong road. He says, no, you don't go down this road. So if we were to look at that as an example of a trespass, that means we're not going down the road in which God has designed for us, that maybe, maybe we might be sinning. Or then it says to sin is that term to miss the mark. It says failure to hit the target, that which we are aiming at. Oh my goodness, can that apply to me? Well, suppose I intend to pray and I don't pray. Have I missed the mark? Yes. Suppose I intend to read the word of God and I don't read the word of God. Have I missed the mark? Yes. Or if I go down a path that God has not intended me to go on, am I walking in a way down a path? Am I trespassing down a road that God had no intention for me to go down? Am I trespassing? If we hold that as the standard, oh, woe is me. I am, brothers and sisters, I'm sinning every day. Oh, but I just thank God for the blood of Jesus. That's what we have. And we, and we don't fall into condemnation. But if we look at it like that, all of us are guilty. And then he goes on to say, and, and uh, Paul is writing, he says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. One translation says, you are walking in the, age, in the ways of this world. If that means if you trespass, if you slip, and if you fall, and you're fall going down a wrong path, then that could be considered sin. 
Well, Pastor, you have a high, this is a pretty high standard. Well, our God is pretty holy. Actually, our God, our God is really holy. And to be in his presence is when you're really in God's presence, when you're really in his holiness, that song says, we can't help but fall on our knees and fall at, our, uh, at his feet because of that holiness. And all the enemy wants to do, I believe, that all he wants to do is to get off course. If he can get you off course, if he can get you to go down a path that God did not intend you to go on, he's good with that. If he can get you to be confused as to who you are, as to how God made you to be, if he can get you to be confused about that, he's gotten you what? Off course. Maybe that is something that we can consider trespassing. Now, when Paul is talking, when he's, when he's saying to you, he's referring to the Gentiles. He's saying uh, the Gentiles. And anybody who is not a Jew is considered a Gentile. We're Gentiles because we're not Jewish. And when he says you, he's referring to them. But then he says we. And then he's, that is when he is referring to himself and the Jews. And this is what he said as we look at that verse again. He says, we all once conducted ourselves all of us, in the, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. He's saying that you're all a mess. Uh, our, our favorite verse, one of our favorite verses, one we're familiar with, Romans 3.23, it says this, for all, for all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. That means all of us have done it at some point or another. That's why I am just so thankful for the blood. But then we have to look at another note. Not only does the devil want us to go off course, if he can get us off of our purpose, because I believe each and every one of us has a call of God. Each and every one of us has a path in which God wants us to walk. And if God can just get you off that path and have you do your own thing, He's good with that. If he can get you confused as to who you are, he's good with that. If he can get you to, when you want to go to church and you just, well, I can't make it today, he's good with that. That's what he's trying to do. It says this. When he, he, says, uh, he says, you are walking according to the prince of the power of the air. It says the spirit. What it says? the spirit who is now at work in the sons of disobedience. This is something we don't necessarily talk about. There is a spiritual demonic force that is working in your, that trying to get you off course, trying to get you to miss the mark, that's trying to get you to fall and to slip. And it, they're just as real as the chairs that you're sitting in. They are real. And I want to tell you something else. That every law that man enacts will not, cannot hinder the demonic forces because they're not subject to man's law. There's only one law that they're subject to, and that is the word of God. That is Jesus Christ. That's the, only, that, that's the only way they're going to be subject. And the only way we can do that is we, if we have the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting uh, with verse 3. It says, it says, if even our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. It says, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory, the glory of Jesus, who is the image of God. Once again, uh, spiritual forces at work. We don't necessarily, we can't see them, but it does not negate that they're at work in our, they're working in our lives to try to get us off course. Of course we're saved. Of course we believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. But if the enemy can get you off course, if he can get you on a path that God does not intend, oh my, I'm here to tell you, he's good with that. How do we find out? What, what is the evidence of the spiritual demonic forces 
that are at work. Now, we talked about this in Bible study last Wednesday where we're going through the book of James with Pastor Bob at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, and we talked about this. This is James chapter 3, starting with verse 13. This is out of the Amplified. It says this, among you, Who among you is wise and intelligent? Let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with the gentleness and humility of true wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambitions, where? In your hearts. Do not be arrogant as a result to be as a result be in defiance of the truth. This superficial wisdom is not is not that which comes down from above, but it is what earthly, secular, natural, unspiritual, even demonic. That's the earth. That is the that is what is happening. Now, what is the result of that? We see that in verse 18 of that earthly wisdom. And all we have to do is look at is the proof in the pudding, starting with verse 16. For where there is jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is what? Disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing and morally degrading practice. So we see that the evidence of the wisdom from the, uh, from from earth that earthly demonic wisdom is going to be what it's going to be there's, there's going to be rebellion and there's going to be unrest and there's going to be disorder and there's going to be morally degrading practices and I'm here to tell you saints that we see it oh we see it in our schools we see it in our government we even see it in the church this is where this is how we can discern it this is the evidence. This is to let you know these are the forces that are at work. And we, all we have to do is turn on the TV or look at the news. We can see how it's being influenced, that we see jealousy. We see disorder. We see unrest. We receive rebellion and every evil thing. Because what? They're receiving a wisdom that is demonic, a wisdom that is earthly, a wisdom that is natural. And that's the evidence. And that is, shows you that the path in which they're going down. And that path is what the Bible says is broad and wide. And it says how many find it? Many find it. And that's what he wants to do. So he says you have to check yourself to see if you're going down the wrong path. To see if you're missing the mark. And when we check ourselves and we look at ourselves... I don't know about you, I see that I fall woefully short because I miss the mark. And sometimes I go down the wrong path. But God is gracious. And this one we go to Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 7. And it says this, even though you have all this, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were what? Dead in trespasses. He made us alive together with Christ, that by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us, in Jesus Christ. So first, you know, we talks about we've been made alive together in Christ. And it is not by anything that we say or do, but it is by his grace. And he says we, he's raised us up and he's made us to sit together in heavenly places. So when we look at that, well, are we saved? Yes. Are we experiencing his mercy? Yes. Has he raised us up when we were dead and now we're alive in Christ? Yes. But then he says he made us to sit together in heavenly places. And I think that God moves through us in spite of ourselves. That's why I know it's by his grace. Because, if, if, again, if, we, if it was just based on our, unright, our righteousness, no, nobody would get saved. But it is through his grace and mercy that flow 
through us that people get saved and people get delivered. Now, when he says that we are maybe sitting up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, what could, could that mean for us? I believe it means this. Okay, this again, book of Ralph. Now, if I'm sitting here, ah, now if this, if this place was packed, <laughs> there would be, I wouldn't be able to see people in the third or fourth row because I'm sitting level with them. My perspective is limited. Why? Because of where I'm seated. It limits what I can see. However, if I move up here to this chair, what's changed? My height and my perspective. I see things differently when I'm seated up there in heavenly places with Christ Jesus because my perspective has changed. Where do we see that? Like, for example, we look at Paul, and he's talking about the thorn in the flesh. And, and at, his, at first, he wants that thorn to be removed, right? Because it was a messenger of Satan. And he asked the Lord three times had to have it be removed. But what did the Lord says? He says, my grace is sufficient. Now, did the circumstance change? No. What changed? Paul's perspective on it. Again, he saw it from a different light. He said, now this thing that was this thorn, oh, it's for God's glory because he's working in me that when I am weak, he is strong. He says, yes, this thorn has a purpose to keep me from getting the big head because God is pouring all this revelation upon me. And he says, I'm giving you this thorn so that you don't get the big head, that you don't think you're all that. It's a reminder. It means that his perspective was changed. And that's what I think when he's talking about when we're seating up there in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, that our perspective has changed. That we know when we lose loved ones, we miss them and we grieve over them. But then what happens when we realize that they know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Our perspective changes. Because no longer are, are we looking at it from a natural point of view, but we're looking at it, there is some day that I'm going to meet my loved one. There is some day I'm going to visit with them. My wife and I, uh, we lost our first child. And as a result, she had to have, she had an optoptic, optopic pregnancy and she, her fallopian tube and uterus were removed and we lost that child. But you know what? Guess what happens when I get to glory? I'm going to see that child. I'm going to be, I'm going to say, oh, you're my dad. Ooh. <laughs> but that I'll be able to visit with them. And the child that we lost will be reunited. Is the child lost? Yes. But my perspective had to change, meaning that I'm going to be reunited with that child. That's what he's saying when you're seated up there in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That means your perspective has changed. And sometimes we go through difficult situations. And sometimes God is saying, I just need you to look at it from a different point of view. I need you to look at it seated up there in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's what I need you to see. This is the spiritual passage that, that, we, that we can hang on. And for me, it is like, when we look at it like that, it also impacts how we even pray. If we're believing for our loved ones and we look at them and they, we, we see that they're just acting all crazy, oh, this is the scripture that... I love, this is Colossians chapter 3, I mean chapter 1, starting with verse 13 and 14, and it reads like this. For who? He rescued us and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us to kingdom of his 
beloved son in whom we have redemption because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and in the cancellation of sin's penalty. In other words, we're no longer condemned. And that's the perspective that we have. And that's what I think when he's talking about, when he's talking about return to that first love. Remember what Jesus did for you. Remember that you were lost, but now you're found. But how should we respond to that? What should be the manifestation of when we recognize that we were lost and we were in darkness and the Lord delivered us because it was he that rescued us. Psalm 107, starting with verse 13. It reads like this. It says this, Lord, help. They cried in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress. He brought them out of darkness. What does it say? He brought them out of darkness of the, and the shadow of death. That's where we were without Christ. And he has broke their chains in pieces. Well, that is the verse that I am praying for my unsaved loved ones. This is what I am believing for them that they have been brought out of darkness, out of the shadow of death, and they broke their chains in pieces. And then what, what does it say in verse 15? Look at what it says. And this should be our response. This should be our, our, the action that follows when we recognize that we have been delivered, when we recognize that we have been set free. It says this. He says this in verse 15. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. That means we got to do some reflecting. That means we, we've got to think about where we were and think about what he, was, had, what he has done and what the, should that solicit from us. It should, we should give thanks. Thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful work to the children of men. Well, I think that, that, that means we got to sing a, a song of praise. That means we have to sing a song of thanksgiving for his goodness. So I just ask the, the, the praise and worship team to lead us in a song of thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. No 
my life you have been faithful No my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of
like you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you're not only has your goodness running after us, but it has caught us. It has overtaken us. That we have been, we have been saturated with your goodness. And we just thank you. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy that you're doing in our lives even now. In Jesus' name. I think the Lord is wants us as we reflect on his goodness and we reflect on what he has done that I believe it would be a good time to take communion to remember the blood and to remember the body that was broken so I'm going to have Pastor Sam come up and just lead us in communion amen 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 It's a big privilege for do this. Uh, I'm trying to make understand my English, and the uh, Holy Spirit help you understand me. Okay. Before share the communion, let me share something happened in this day. Uh, the last week, actually, last Friday, because this is connected with the uh, communion. Communion is very important in the life of the Christian. But before you take the communion, you need to uh, examine your life. Okay. Uh, last Friday, I got a little bit problem in my word. In this one, make me thinking a lot in these days. The old Friday, I got sad day. But God tell me in a way, I know it, uh, cut my hair, and that, way, that there, the, the, the one guy right there, he told me, don't give up. You never know what happened in my life. And uh, just in thinking in that word, in my work, the guy, the owners, he told my helpers, I'm Christian. He told him, Sam is Christian. He never told me that, but you reflected who you are in no matter where you're going, no matter where you're at, you reflected Jesus Christ in your life when you walk with Jesus. The people can see it in your life. Remember when a Peter's uh, how you call this? Deny Jesus? And they told Peter, hey, we saw you, you walk with him. And, she, and uh, Peter says, no. No, no, that is not true. And, uh, like uh, in, uh, minutes, uh, I don't know how long the time passed, but uh, another people told Peter, hey, we saw you with him. So Christians, People look at us everywhere. And uh, later, they told Peter again, hey, you talk like him. You smell like him. You're wearing clothes like him. So you can hide Jesus in your life. So the communion take us for meditate this way. Hey, when we take communion, it says we are part of the body of Jesus Christ. So it's very insane. It's very it's important in the life of Christians. No Christians can skip it. That is the brothers and sisters. If this is online, this is the time you can come to the church and meet with us and celebrate the communion because it's very important. We not stay at the home. Oh, yeah, I watch in the TV in the home the, the message. No, this is the time to come to the church and celebrate communion because you're part of the life of the Jesus Christ. If you understand me, if not, I can tell you in Spanish if you want. 
If not in my language, in the dialect, I may speak, because if not, the Spanish is my second language. And uh, try to speak in the English for make you understand you are part of the life and the Christ. You're part of the body. So you need to enjoy with the body the Jesus Christ. Because we are only one body in Christ. We not divide. You can stay home. You can stay right there. He says, I wait here. Send me the bread. Send me. No, 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 no. It's here in the house of the Lord. Okay. Jesus coming soon, my brothers and sisters. Imagine if you are right there in your house watching us and online, and you not take the communion. And an hour later, Jesus coming, I'm sorry you left behind. Because it's necessary we do it with, with another brother and sister. And this is the time you can. Re- meditated and reflected in your life, if you have something wrong in your life, you fix it today. Fix it in a minute. Fix it in this second. Because God only takes one second for forgiving you. This is I did last Friday because I feel so sad. I told my wife, and she told me to, Sam, you need to talk with the owner. We're driving to downstairs for waiting here, but nobody home. But I want to talk with him before the prayer meeting the last Friday. Because I know if I have something bad with another person, my prayer not cross to the roof. Okay, because this is the Bible says. This is the God's word says. So I need to fix it. But I have in my heart fixed this situation before the prayer meeting. I went right there. Nobody appeared. We need to go to the prayer meeting. We got late for the prayer meeting for that situation. But this morning, I went in the house. I told those people, forgive me for how I say, for what I said that Friday. Forgive me. But if you have somebody more for finish the work in your house, I want to feel peace in my heart and with God. So they told me, Sam, we're looking for 100 people for finish this work, but we don't find someone. But if you want to finish it, it's yours. So that is understanding. God working in them. The last Friday, I saw him. He crying in the right there when I told him I'm quit. But now when I told them, I for I call forgive, forgive me, forgive me. I told him forgive me. I told the wife forgive me. The wife started crying this morning. That says, this is necessary, forgive each another one. So when we take communion in Christ Jesus Christ, is the time to tell the brothers and sisters, forgive me the, the, the situation. Maybe small things, okay? Maybe something small, tiny thing you have in your heart, but you need to fix it in Jesus Christ. Uh, communion is very important. Because we're talking, we say, we tell that we tell the world, we are part of Jesus Christ. We are part of this body. Like the Jesus raised in the dead, so Jesus says, when He come back, we raise us and go with Him. I no want to stay here in this world, pay more bills. I no want to stay in this world for more problems in the world. No, I want to go with Jesus. I don't know you. I don't know the people watching us right there. But it's the time to, how call this? To get the forgive. You call God, forgive me. I'm go to church, no matter what happened. I like or not like the message, but I go, I'm still, I'm sit right there. Something God make in your heart. I'm not the people understand too much English, but I'm here for here for listening to the message of the pastor. In some words right there, God, call me. God, tell me something. I don't need to understand all the message. Only some small words right there, God can fix in my life. Okay? So the word of God says this. Brothers and sisters, you can uh, uh, pass the uh, bread and... Um, in the cup, Pastor Smiley, thank you. This is the time and meditate. 
I can skip the communion. I want to be the part, the body of Christ. So Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, show your mercy for me. I know I'm sinners. I need you forgive. I need you, Jesus. Maybe sometimes you tell the Lord, I don't want to go more to the church. I don't want to go read more your word. I don't want to more ab hear about you. But same time, where are we going? If he gives life for us, if he gives bread for us, if he provides all our necessities we have every day, where are we going? We can't go anywhere. So it's necessary to tell him, Jesus, forgive me. And I want to be part of this communion. I give you a, a minute. Meditate it. Meditate it. We have one minute for meditating this. Quietly do it in your car. Maybe you have some issues in your car. And tell Lord, Lord, this is embodied. We are here in your presence. We are here, oh Jesus. You know us. You know everyone. Before the words come out in our mouth, you know, oh Jesus. your love. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace, oh Jesus. Because these three big things we needed. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God says this in First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, the 23rd, how you say it, says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take it of bread, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Verse 25 says this. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take the cup. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord death till he comes. Amen. Oh, Jesus, thank you for this beautiful morning, this day. Thank you for giving us this big opportunity for share, for yes. communion for each and other one. Thank you for showing your love. Thank you for your mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you for your joy in our heart. Because now, O oh Lord, we have your joy, your peace in our heart. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Thank you for uh, your shyness, your pride, your, uh, your, your, your love, brightest in our face. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Because now we go with another people surround us everywhere we anywhere we can go. Oh Lord, your peace we can shelter and our peoples need it. 
Your joy we can show the peoples nearer to O Lord. Because you walk with us. You live in our heart, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful moment. Thank you, O Lord, for our pastor, for our brothers and sisters in this church. Thank you. We bless your name, O Lord, in this moment. Thank you. Amen. 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 Pastor Miley. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Thank you so much. Mm. Amen. Amen. I think you did pretty good. <laughs> Amen. You did a great job. Oh, such privilege. I know service didn't go like it normally does, but sometimes you just have to allow the Spirit of the Lord to change up things. And it was just such a privilege to be able to be here and just to receive communion in a spirit of thanksgiving, remembering everything that he has done. And you may be out there, you know, watching me on YouTube and Facebook. And you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, Jesus wants you to walk a path to himself, and he's drawing you to him by his spirit. Jesus says this, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. So this is your opportunity for the spirit of the Lord to come into your life and change the course of your life, change the direction of your life, leading you in a path that leads to him of a path of so fulfilling and so rich that you might experience his grace and mercy in such a way, it doesn't matter what you have done, that his grace is sufficient. So I want, I want, what I want you to do is, if you're out there, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And I want you to repeat after me. I recognize my need of the Savior. I believe that Jesus Christ died for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess my sins. I ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised Jesus from the dead. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I ask to be filled with your precious Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. If you have said that prayer, you're walking on a new path. And I just want to pray for you and I pray for each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for your goodness and for your tender mercy. Oh, Father, it is only by grace that we have been saved. It's nothing that we've done in and of ourselves. It's not through our merit, our own righteousness, because our righteousness is as of filthy rags. But it is through your shed blood that we have been saved. It was by the stripes that were laid on your body that we have been healed. And we just so thank you and praise you for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do. So, Father, we ask that you would just continue to be with us, that we don't, when we do slip, we get back up. And when we do stray off the path, that you guide us with the light of your word back onto that path that we want us to walk. So we thank you for this day because this is a day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. And in this we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Um, I have to just, just, just agree with what Pastor Sam was saying. Uh, I'd like to invite you to La Mirada Foursquare Church. And, and if you can't, don't, can't make it here, find a church where you can plant yourself in. 
where you can grow in the, in the fruit of the Spirit. That is why he's called us to be planted in the house of the Lord. So I would encourage you to find a church where the word of God is being preached, where the people love God and the people love their neighbor. And I always read out of, in conclusion, I always read out of Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, that is, Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, we got some announcements. Amanda, yes. Just in time for that. There she is. There she is. Oh, uh, one of the pillars of the church. Yeah. Yes. What can I get for you? Praise God. I think this cloudy weather is making us quiet today. <laughs> There'll be prayer on Monday and Wednesday mornings here at the church, 6 a.m. until, are we doing this Monday? Yeah, okay, this Monday. There'll be Bible study on Wednesday night with Pastor Bob studying the book of James here at 7 p.m. Come out for a good time of learning the word. And we will be having Spanish service later tonight at 5 p.m. with Pastor Sam. <laughs> and with that, it is offering time. Oh, we can do better than that. It's offering time. There you go. All right, Heavenly Father, we just love you and we glorify your holy name. Thank you again for this wonderful moment here with you, Lord. And we just pray that you would continue to be with us through this day, Lord, that we don't just leave you here where you met us, Lord, that we continue to have you in our hearts wherever we may go yeah. so that people will see you living in our lives, Lord. And we just pray for our lost loved ones, Lord. We continue for their salvation, Lord. Yeah. And we just humbly come before you, Lord, for our nation, Lord. We just lift it up to you as yeah. uh, there's just no words, Lord. Um, you are our help. You are the one we run to, Lord, and we are putting them at your feet, Lord. We pray for their salvations as well, Lord. Yeah. And we just thank you and glorify your name. And until we meet again, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>